Hey people, I'm Nat at Mud Magic. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me again today. It's a very sad day today in the Mud Magic family. Uh, Trace is not here today. This is my first kiln unload where she's not here. So we're not going to have any claps or gasps or anything. So I'm just going to have to entertain myself and just pretend that she's here because it's going to be so hard. I'm so nervous to do this without her there supporting me. Uh, so bear with me. I don't have any of her sign language today or anything to help me along the way. So I'll do my best. So uh, Freddie Mercury is very cold. Um, We'll, we'll get we'll open him up so i have had a look at the top shelf and there's a bit of a mixed bag in here it's pretty good it's all right so i've uh, really packed my shelves you would have noticed before i've had a bit of trouble with the top shelf being really cold and the last one i think it was the last one the top shelf didn't even get to a five even starting to bend so i didn't even know if it was a four so we've had advice if you put bigger pieces on uh it will get hotter but also I look back on all my videos and the ones where it was colder, you could only, the, only the very top element was, um, was showing. So I had my shelf a lot higher and then I had just little pieces. So I only had the one element. So I think if I have at least two elements from looking at my videos, it's better. So I've got three today because I've got bigger pieces. So five is definitely gone. Six is going. So uh, five and a bit. <laughs> so definitely looks like that's the answer so that's really good i'm really happy that that with that so i'll get this piece out first so this one trace uh nicknamed this the pineapple <laughs> when i did it which i think is a very appropriate name for it i'm not very happy with it i took hours carving i hand carved all of that and then I decided to try that flooding again that Jessica Putnam Phillips recently did a video on. So you get your underglaze, you're about 50-50 with water, maybe a bit less water. And then you load your long thin brush up and when you touch it in here, it kind of floods in and because it's bisque it soaks in. And then I didn't really want it just clear white, so I put glacier over it and it's, I don't mind it. I think again, it's going to have to grow on me but it's muted the colours, which you would expect that it would, but I use blue, a tealy green colour, yellow and purple under glazes. And then I just put glacier all over. And in fact, I actually even put glacier inside because I've run out of clear. So normally I would have put clear inside, but I just used glacier. So anyway, that's interesting. Now this one, Palladium over snow. I just love it. It's very, very, very shiny, very mirror reflective. If I come around here, you'll be able to see me in the mirror, maybe. <laughs> um, and what I love about it is the way that it feathers, the way palladium feathers over snow. I'll come around the back because I can't see. Um, but where you've got the big dribbles, you haven't got the feathering. They're quite thick, big dribbles, which I love but I actually really love the feathering. That's why I did it. So that's a bit of a disappointment, but you can, you can kind of see the feathering. Oh, here, there's a good example. Normally where palladium hits snow, it does this gorgeous feathering. So obviously I had that a little bit too thick to get the feathering effect, but I still love it. Um, snow again has pinholed terribly, but I think that I just have to learn to live with that now unless I want to refire it again. But being a vase, it doesn't really matter. I can't work out why. I've tried burnishing. I've tried all the recommendations I've had. Thinner, thicker, burnishing it. You know, nothing seems to help. Refiring it seems to get rid of them a bit. But yeah, it's a bit disappointing. Now, <laughs> this one, I did a video on attempting a moon jar, but not porcelain, it's not really a moon jar, so you can go back and have a look at it, out of my marbled clay. So what I wanted to do and what I did was I did less of the blue stain and less of the turquoise stain because um, I wanted to see, because stain so expensive, what colour I would end up with. So I used a fair bit less than I normally do because it's normally really dark. And then with the pink, I used a whole heap more because the pink always burns out. And oh, I love it. Look at how pretty it is. So in fact, the blue and the turquoise are still quite strong in colour. So they're beautiful. But look at some of the 
the um, beautiful, look around here, this beautiful marbling. It's so pretty. So yes, so I promised that I would say which one it was when it came out. And that's it. So if you want to see what marbling looks like before you put the clear on and fire it, you can go back and have a look at that video, two or three videos back from this one. Um, but yeah, I'm really impressed with that. It's amazing how much more it pops when it comes out of the kiln fire. You'll be able to go have a look. So I'll put that up there. Uh, and then this one was just a turquoise white that I did altered the rim I did one ages and ages ago the same altered rim and it cracked right down and I kept meaning to do it again and I just never got around to it so I've done it again now that's cute I like that it's a bit sort of deep and high but <laughs> a different sort of shape for a bowl but you know I still like that you know me I love my marbling so that's that shelf done so oh oh okay so uh, you, oh, it's beautiful. So I did a while ago, and I've just got it out for this purpose. I did this peacock bowl. So it's um, winter wood, teal, uh, sorry, teal next time, carabin blue and pink opal, all my coat glazes. And then I did a coat of, so I did two of winter wood on the base, did all those colors with dots, light flux Ws, that's what pulls it all and then one coat of winter wood over the whole thing. And you think you're gonna cover it up, but it comes through. Anyway, so Trace and I was sort of like, I love it, but it's a bit too, too brown, too many speckles. So she did one on a previous unload, you can go have a look at, I haven't got it here, where she didn't do winter wood on the base, she only did one coat of winter wood over the top, which was beautiful and a lot less brown. But I wanted to try the exact same thing with sandstone because sandstone apparently has smaller brown dots. I've never used it before. So I bought a bottle of it and I've done the exact same thing and I did the little butterfly on the back um, and I ran out of winterwood, so that's just honey flux on the back. So to compare, this is exactly the same, although I think my dots were bigger and this is beautiful. Um, with sandstone instead and there you go it's wrong that's sandstone so sandstone has not got smaller brown if anything it's bigger it's more like a cheetah skin because the back of it is more this one's I can see on the rim so winter wood the background of winter wood is more cream and I probably prefer the winter wood background but oh wow Look at the peacocking. I mean, that's amazing. That's even, the way that that's reacted, that even look like feathers. They've even got the feathering. I don't know how I did that, <laughs> but I'm happy with it. The pink opal has gone quite maroney, I think, because the this is such a more of a brown than the cream. So the pink opal has gone quite a maroon color, but that's spectacular. I love that. I'm gonna to have to really dissect and look at that. I'm not quite sure what these pools here are. That's a bit unusual, I'm not sure, but that's stunning. And I see, I got these new Sam Val Bunny transfers and I just thought they were so cute. So I wanted to put one, he's looking over his bum and it's on the bum. So I just thought that was really cute. But wow, I'm really impressed with that. Just the way that it's feathered. It's just so beautiful. That's wow. That's a big wow, that one. So that's just, that's just really interesting. Just the only difference is winter wood and sandstone. There you go. I love that. So that is that shelf done because I didn't have any more little things or little tall things to sort of squish around it fill the space in so he was all by himself oh and cones on that one was the same as the top shelf five dead almost identical so that's interesting too so ah oh, this shelf's only got one on it as well for the same reason so um so this one i was a bit of a test for me i just wanted to see what would happen it's interesting 
So you've seen before how much I love Spectrum Reactive Red. <laughs> I do, I love it, it's just beautiful. So I've done it over Obsidian before and got this beautiful purple trace, did that tester for us. And by itself it's this pink. So I thought, well I love pink and purple together. I'm gonna do Obsidian just on the bowl part and leave the top part the white clay and the back's just the obsidian, although the pink, which I knew it would do, I wasn't worried, but it has run through on the back, that's fine. Uh, and then, so I did obsidian, I think two, two or three coats of obsidian, and then three coats of spectrum reactive red over the whole thing. So that's just the reactive red that's on the obsidian. And you can see I've left the swirl where it breaks pink, where there's, where there's a bit of texture. So if you do something on texture, that whole thing breaks like that. It's beautiful. I've done it in my previous on things like chopstick bowls and stuff, but wow, I love that. So that's a good way of getting the pink and purple. Um, you could even do like, uh, do a what say a white bowl. I really want to do this now. It's in my head. A white bowl, tape resist. Um, oh, sorry. Cover the whole thing in obsidian, tape resist, and spectrum reactive red. But then you get purple and black. Anyway, I'll have a play, and I'll see. Because <laughs> if you did the reactive red first, then you've got obsidian on top, and it wouldn't work. So I'll have to think that through. But I think that's a great test. I did. It did crack where I've done the heart. It didn't crack until I put it through bisque and then I got all these little cracks. But I kept going with it because I love the idea of it anyway. But it's funny because it didn't crack at all when I did the cuts, but I obviously did them too close to the edge and then they all cracked. Um, but I just, I love it. It's beautiful. That's very me, pink and purple. So that's that shelf done. Oh, the cookies on this one. Wow, look at that. So this one's the hottest. Oh, I just dropped one down the side. I'll scrap that. Oh, I've got a bit of it stuck on the shelf. I have to grind that off. Okay. A bit of grog on the shelf. So, I don't know where that fell down to, but anyway. I'll get it as I dig. So you can see five and six, that's the hottest I've ever had on any shelf. So the seven fell down in here. So it'll be interesting to see, I'll find it in there, but that's very, very, very dead, um, very hot. So this one, and there again, it's come back not as hot, which I've had that happen before as well. So second from the bottom shelf seems to be my hot at the middle, which makes sense, I suppose, in the middle of the kiln. So that is five, six just going. So the rest of them were all that sort of that same sort of temperature. So I did a refire on that one that was, oh, it's worked it's apart from being all over the cookie, but I'll be able to grind that off. That's interesting. So that is just copper red. And it was quite, it's actually really pretty on the rim now. It's pulled down, but there was a lot of um, these white blonde patches here where I hadn't put enough glaze and in fact they probably there was a part of it but it looks a lot better now so that was worth the refire I'll have to do a bit of grinding um, but I love that copper red that's just one glaze that's beautiful I love that and then this was a refire which I didn't expect to work actually it has a little bit so that was baby poo baby poo brown in a nappy from the last kiln unload and it still is uh, so i got in touch with cara from amico on the amico facebook site and she kind of indicated there wasn't much i could do because i'd put too much iron luster she thought so with the iron luster oatmeal she recommends two coats of the iron luster and i definitely would have put three and then three thick coats of the oatmeal so she, I said to her, should I add more glaze? She's like, oh, just try and fire it hotter and just see. And that's lavender inside. So I had, didn't add any more glaze. That's just a refire from last time. And it had none of that purple at all before. And now it has got a little bit of it over. And I actually think that that now is just acceptable for me because, you know, I don't like browns. But that little bit of opalescence over it in the sun, that would probably be really pretty. So that's 
I think that's been saved now. I quite like that now. Well, I like it better than it was. So, this one is an attempt at the red stain. So this is the bright red that I've now got. I must have got it by accident and it's more of a peachy red, but again, I've got these, which will be the, um, the, the grog from the shelf above where I had that platter. So what I'm thinking is happening because I'm being really careful now when I've got grog on the shelves. What I'm thinking is happening when you put anything in for glaze frying, it expands first, then it contracts, because we all know they shrink, but it expands first. So I'm thinking when it's expanding, it's pushing some of the grog off over the side, because I'm really careful with how I place it now. So that's a real shame. There's quite a fair bit of it in there. Um, I'm not very happy with the red. It's not as red as the one that I used to have. So that's called Bright Red from Abbott's. So I'm gonna go back to the, um, I don't even remember what it's called. I think it might just be called Red because that's more, it's between red and orange and pink kind of thing. It's, you know, I preferred, I used to have a beautiful dark red and it was really pretty. So I'll go back to that. Now this one, <laughs> I just decided I made one of these. You've seen them before. Oh, there's that other. Sorry, I'll just grab that other. Oh, just reach it. So from the shelf above, so that's even the seven starting to go. And I've never, ever, ever had seven even slightly bend. So that was the six and a bit, the shelf above this one. So that's very interesting. So that was the, the five and the six. So yeah. Anyway, so this one, I did one of these little um, incense burners. Again, it's got all the grog in it. Um, you put the little thing over, you put the cone in there, light it, put that on, all the smoke comes out and it's really pretty. Or you can leave that off, put your stick in the little hole I put in there. You've got your big stick and you can burn them. And then I just put the little rose transfers on and they weren't, they didn't come off very well. They were kind of a bit patchy. So I decided to put the, that's fog. I decided to put fog over, which has kind of a greenish tinge to it. So I thought with the, with the leaves and the gardeny kind of motif, that can be pretty. And I don't mind that at all, apart from all oh, the crock that's gone on it. So yeah, I'm gonna have to think about, maybe I'll just have to put any platters on the bottom shelf now, just so that that doesn't happen. So I might just do that from now and just do one in any, in every kiln. But still that's pretty. And then the last two, <laughs> these ones have been in the making for quite some time and they've actually, I uh, must've forgotten to wipe the bottom. So what happened was I made this little one and I did it with obsidian and then I did power turquoise um, splobs inside. I just flicked the paintbrush inside and it did this real pretty, I really like that. Um, and then I, so I had that for ages but I ran out of power turquoise. So I pulled this bowl, but I never, gla I didn't glaze it because I'd run out of power turquoise. So I finally got more power turquoise. In Australia, it's impossible to get glazes. It takes forever. So I've now glazed this one the same. Uh, the obsidian with just the power turquoise inside. And then <laughs> I picked this up to copy it and promptly dropped it. So I smashed it. So then this one was done. So then I had to make another little one. So that's not the original little one. <laughs> so that was really funny. So I was able to glaze them together anyway. Um, so that's it. So, um, so kiln favorite, oh no, it would have to be this one. That's just blown me away, the way that's feathered. I'm not sure that I'm sold on that sandstone. It's a lot darker than I thought it was gonna be, but the, peacock in the way that really looks like feathers the way that's really feathery <laughs> it's the only way i would describe that if anyone asked me i'd say it looks like a feather um so yeah i'm really impressed with that that's beautiful i really like that so that's my kiln favorite and my kiln flop um oh 
good. Isn't that nice when you don't have a standout kiln flop? Um, yeah, actually, I'm, I guess if I had to pick one, I've never had not had one. It would be this because it's still too brown, but it's heaps better than it was and I still think it's acceptable. So how nice is that? No kiln flop for today. So thank you very much for joining me again today. Uh, hopefully Trace will be back for the next one. I'm not sure though, because with Easter, it kind of mucks everybody around. She's got kids and everything as well. So life gets a bit hectic at this time of year, but I do miss her. I hope she's back. I love you, Trace. I hope you enjoyed this opening. Uh, stay muddy and have a magic day. Bye.